Pat with Pat's Two Cents. I was offline for half a week. So if you haven't been able to reach me or see what I'm doing, that's the reason. And that's the reason for these photographs. But please listen to the message. This is from the last weekend, the Saturday service. God bless you. Trust your loved ones in God's hands. Sometimes we have to get out of God's way and we have to watch, maybe with tears coming down your eyes as it hurts your heart to see them going through unnecessary trauma. Your prayers are happening and sometimes their trauma is an answer to your prayer because God knows some people can come quietly and some people must come hard. He knows who's who and what's what, and he knows how to get the job done. Trust your loved ones in God's hands. Trust yourself in God's hands. He will keep you in perfect peace, no matter how painful the situation, if you keep your mind stayed on him, not on them, not on what they said, not on what they did, not on how they hurt you, not on the buttons they know how to push in you, but if you keep your mind stayed on him, that's how you keep that perfect peace. I'm going to share this real quick. It's coming to my mind, so I feel like the Lord wants me to share it. One of the hardest things for us to deal with in life is death. Any form of death, whether it is a figurative death or a physical death. It is very difficult to deal with deaths of any kind. And what comes as a result of experiencing a death is mourning. Now, one of the sad things about mourning is how painful mourning can be. But I'm gonna tell you this. This is the experience I believe the Lord wants me to share with you about that perfect peace. When my father passed away in 1982, I had taken care of him till he passed. I led him to the Lord like seven or eight months prior, and then he passed in the month of May. And I remember I kissed him on his forehead. And right after I kissed him on his forehead, he drew his last breath, and I saw him die. I saw him. I saw the death occur right in front of me. And I remembered how his eyes popped wide open and they went around in a complete circle. And I thought, oh my God, his eyes look almost plastic. It was the weirdest looking thing. Well, I started having flashbacks. I want you to hear this story. I started having flashbacks. And as a result of having flashbacks, what ended up happening is... Uh, the people came over after the uh, after we went to the hospital. They pronounced him dead, told me he was DOA. And we came back to the house, and everybody gathered around me. We prayed, and I asked Sister Annie Mae Young if she would pray that God would take the flashbacks away, number one. Number two, if God would also remove the mourning all at once. In other words, Lord, this whole thing was to get Pop into your presence. We got him saved. We were able to reconcile differences from, from family dynamics. And now he's there with you. So my request is, since it's mission accomplished, I don't want to mourn that. So I know mourning is normal, but I'm asking you to help me by, t by helping me mourn it all at once. My father and I were like twins. I mean, he was, he, was, he was my hero. I mean, yeah, I had a wonderful father. Not perfect, but wonderful. So what happened? After she prayed the prayer, the flashback stopped. The next thing that happened, my sister and Peggy and I went up to Farnsworth Park and watched the sun come up. Uh, before we went up to Farnsworth, I was with the two of them and I busted out crying. I mean, I, I, cry, I cry loud sometimes. And I was very loud, very emotional, and it was coming out like, like gushes. I mean, it was gushing out of me. And when I got through crying, that was the end of the feeling I had of mourning. 
It was a miracle, y'all. This is what God is able to do. I told them, you, you know, once we got up to Farnsworth, what I felt right then was as if I was suspended in outer space in the middle of the stars. And everything around me, everything in me, everything, every sensation I had was total stillness. Total stillness. I finally knew what the Bible meant when it said that peace that passes all understanding. No matter what you go through, I am telling you, God can give you peace. I went through an eight year uh, stretch of, a, of an adulterous marriage from the second month of our marriage to the eighth year with my first ex-husband. I mean, my first husband, he's my ex-husband. He's, he's passed away now, but he was a good man as far as how he treated me and kind hearted, but he was addicted to pornography, prostitutes, and X-rated, all that stuff. He was addicted to it like a man hooked on crap. And even though he hated himself, he was hooked on it. He was hooked. You hear me? Three or four times a week, he was out there doing his thing. So after three years of marriage, I had to go out in the backyard and gesture as I gave God every inch of what I was going through. It was painful. It was embarrassing. The rejection, the insecurity I felt, it was horrible. I'm telling you, it was one of the craziest parts of my life. But God, because when I leaned on God with all that, and I said, Lord, here are my feelings of insecurity, betrayal, hurt, pain, humiliation, the whole nine yards, everything I listed that I could possibly drudge up. I even gave Kirk over to God. I said, the marriage, everything belongs to you. I'm asking you, take it. I don't want to carry it anymore. I'm tired of hurting. I want to live my life, serve you, and be and enjoy the abundant life and not be all burdened down by this problem that looks like it ain't going nowhere anytime too soon. So that next day, Kurt came home looking guilty as usual, which you know pretty much told the story of what happened the night before. And I was shocked. I felt nothing. I felt no pain. I felt no anxiety. I felt no humiliation, no rejection. I felt nothing but peace. And I said, there it is again, that peace that passes all understanding. And from that point on, I pursued everything I could do for God and stayed on task doing prison ministry, singing in the choir, writing songs, all kind of stuff. And I'm telling you, Eleanor and I, we hung out, we went to Marshalls, we go to different conventions and different meetings, and we had a ball. While Kirk was bound up, tied up in knots, committing adultery every other day, I had a ball. And I wasn't angry with him at all. It was like, when the Lord ends the marriage, it'll end. I'm not going to end it. And God told me the seventh year, time and I filed for a divorce, and by the eighth year, we were divorced, and Kirk was gone. And I felt no pain. I never had to look back. It was over. It was buried. It was done. No hard feelings. Oh, how you doing, Kirk? No resentment, no problems, no nothing. When God takes it, when you give that thing over to God, no matter what it is, no matter how you feel like it's eating at you, when God takes it and you release it, really release it, really let it go, not snatch it back and try to control it again, try to manipulate. No, when you really let that stuff go, guess what? You really got the peace that passes all understanding because it is no longer your problem. It's God's. It's for him to solve, not you. Amen? All right. Let's learn to lean on him. Let's learn to trust him, trust his heart, because even if it seems like the whole thing seems unfair and you're the one being cheated, you're not. Because what God allows you to go through, he's going to instill in you a higher ability to show mercy, a higher level of 
love, a higher level of maturity and stability, an anointing is going to be dripping off of you because you're going through it God's way. He will pull you through and he'll pull you out in his time. God bless you. Be encouraged. It's not going to last forever, y'all. All seasons come to an end. Amen? Amen.